Today our message is called, How Do I Become a Christian? So I want to make sure all of you are ready, that you have that mindset. I'm a Christian. I'm a follower of Jesus. That is my lifestyle. That is my identity. That is the deepest truth about who I am, is that I am a child of God, made in the image of God and loved by him. And I walk differently because of that. I am different now. I'm not the same person I used to be before I knew Jesus. I imagine you're not either. You're not the same as you used to be. You used to be a very different person before you knew Christ as your Savior. That's true of all these people here too. They are different people than they used to be because we've been born again. We've had that experience of of a second birth, a new birth. We were born once as a little baby, weren't we? Yeah, isn't that interesting? Every, every person in this room used to be a little baby. It's k- kind of funny, isn't it? Yeah, when you think about it, I used to be a little baby. <laughs> now I'm an adult. <laughs> but a spiritual birth is something very different. Where the old person, the person who walked in sin, is no longer alive. And the new person who is in Christ is now alive. And is a new being. A new creature. But Christianity... Our faith, the God who made the universe, it is about a personal relationship with God. And that personal relationship is possible through Jesus Christ, the Savior. That is how that works. When when you break it down, it is about a relationship between you and God. No one else. You can't get into heaven because your mom was a good Christian. You can't get into heaven because your dad or your friends or your other church members It has to be between you and God. And you having said, I receive Jesus Christ as my Savior for my sins, to wash away my sins and make me a new person. It has to be between you and God. Yes? Amen. So it's it's, it's a beautiful thing. It's also a, a, a reconciliation in a way. It used to be that I was not on good terms. You ever had a fight with a family member or friend? And you're not on good terms for a while. It was kind of like that. Before I became a Christian, before anyone here was a Christian, a follower of Jesus, we were on, we, we were like, we, we were in b- bad terms with God. We were like in a fight where God was not happy with us. We, we didn't like God either. And at, at some point through Jesus, we were now reconciled. Have you ever had reconciliation with a family member or a friend or a child maybe? who you were fighting with for a while, and now you're on good terms. Doesn't that feel great? That's one of the best feelings. I remember there was a cousin. I, he, was, he, was my, he was a younger cousin growing up, and me and him always were close. But sometimes we'd have a fight. Sometimes we'd have a fight, and uh, he would get really mad. He, he would hold a grudge. But eventually, he, he would reconcile with me. And it was one of the best feelings in the world when Travis and I would hug, and we're, we're cool again. That's, it's kind of like that with Jesus. We, through receiving Jesus Christ as our Savior, we be reconciled to God, where we're now on good terms again. We hug, we're happy, we're, we're in fellowship. But we have to have Jesus as our Savior for that to be true. Otherwise, we have a problem. Our sins separate us from God. And God is offended by our sins. He cannot be in communion with sin. Sin is is a horrible thing to God. That's why he says you have to be forgiven by the blood of Jesus and to receive Jesus as your Savior. Repentance is key to salvation in Jesus Christ. Saying, I'm putting off my old path and I'm embracing a new path. I'm saying no to my past ways. I'm not going to live for self anymore. I'm not going to live for my own selfish desires. I'm going to repent, which means to change direction. Repentance is a change of direction. Don't don't let that big churchy word scare you. Just a change of direction. Change of direction. Repentance sounds scary. But change of direction. Instead of selfishness, we say, I'm going to choose God. I'm going to walk with Jesus. Repent and believe the good news. That's what Jesus kept teaching in the Gospel of Mark. Repent and believe the good news. So put off the old path, embrace the new path. Receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. 
And, and it's not like God is trying to keep you away or something. He says, come to me through Jesus and be reconciled. Billy Graham called that peace with God. Peace with God, where you're, you're now, it's a reconciled relationship. You're in relationship, you're good. You're in, a, you're in a right standing with God when you receive Jesus as your Savior. But it's important, I'm sure all of you here have at one point in your life said yes to salvation. You've said, I'm a Christian, I love Jesus, he's my Savior, I'm born again. The second part of that is to stick with it, to keep following Jesus every day. It's not one and done, it's, it's a lifestyle, it's a whole new way of life, and that's one day at a time. Walking with Jesus, praying in the morning, yes? Who here prays in the morning when they wake up? Okay, good. I, I want to see more hands, though. <laughs> pray when you wake up. Pray, for, pray over your meals. Pray at night before you go to bed. And what is prayer? Talking to God. That's right. And we just talk, talk to the Father. Just say, God, I love you today. Thank you for this day. My grandma had over, in her bathroom a scripture. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Some of you know it. It's a good one. And I, I, I repeat that when I wake up. I'll tell you why, too. Because I am so crabby in the morning. Oh, oh, so crabby. I'm sorry. It's just true. I am so, I'm just so bad in the morning. Man, I am just like, some of you are morning people. I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> but I, I almost envy you. That's a cool thing to be a morning person. Some people pray in the morning. They'll pray for an hour in the morning, two hours in the morning, just because they're up at, you know, 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. My grandpa would wake up at 6 a.m., but me, no. So I, I need to repeat that scripture. That's another thing I want to remind you to do is, Fill your mind and your heart with scripture because when, then when you're having a bad day, you can repeat that scripture to yourself, like the one I've memorized. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And I, I, sometimes I got to more than say it. I got to think about what I'm saying so it gets into my heart. And then I can believe that and say, you know what? This is, a, this is the day God made it. He, made it, he makes every day. So I should, I should be glad in it and not, not be crabby. <laughs> but if you're having a bad day, if you're depressed, if you're anxious, if you're worrying, you've got to have Scripture stored up in here and in here to challenge those not true thoughts and say, no, that's not true. That's not true. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I, I, I know it. I, I'll, I'll, I, I'm very, I'll tell you what. Sometimes I'm pretty negative in here. Think, I just can't do it today. You ever think that? I can't do it today. You, you got to challenge that lie and say, no, hold on a minute. That's not true. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. But if I'm not storing up scripture in my heart and in my head, I won't be able to repeat that when the lie comes up. So repeat, store up scripture so you can challenge those lies in your mind and heart. You can speak life then. Speak life over your day. And then you'll, you'll believe truth and you'll know truth. So once we become a Christian, we receive Jesus as our Savior. We know we serve a living Savior, Jesus Christ, who is, he said about himself this, I am the way, the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Yeah. You know, it's really interesting. If you examine things that like Muhammad or Buddha or Zoroaster said, they never claimed things like this. They, they never said, I'm sinless. Jesus said that. They never said, I'm God. Jesus said that. I mean, it's, it's, it's special. This Jesus Christ is really a special guy. And these things he said... Are, are incredible, just so true, so deep. It says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. 
It says, all things were made through me. These are claims that no one else in history has ever made. No one, no one ever, no one, even the, even the, even the, the biggest egomaniacs, you know, never said this kind of thing because they knew it wasn't true. So prayer, talking to this Jesus Christ, who is able to be with all of us at the same time. That's, whoa, that's deep, right? All of you in your rooms at night, praying in different places, and Jesus is there with all of you at the same time. Whoa. When we worship him in hundreds of thousands of churches across the planet Earth on Sunday, he's there in every single one at the same time. That's trippy, as the kids say, right? That's wild, but that's real. That's real. So we pray and we read the Bible. We talk to God by praying. We hear from God by reading the Bible. It's relationship. Like, like I'm talking to a friend. I'm talking, then they talk. Relationship. And as you pray and as you read your word and as you believe, it's also important that you believe it in your heart, then you'll begin to sense God's presence around you. When you pray, when you read the word, you'll begin to say, I feel God's presence in this room. That's special. So pray. Pray thee, our Father. It's a very spiritual prayer. Now, I was raised in a certain uh, denomination where you repeat it, and you repeat it, and you repeat it, and it, it, it became just words after a while. We re would repeat it so many times. So I would challenge you, when you pray the Our Father, I'm sure many of you have it memorized, as you pray it, I want you to think about what you're saying. Because it's not just something you repeat, it's, it's something you're declaring. You're saying, Our Father. Stop there and say, whoa, g g that means God is my Father. Family. Who is in heaven. He's in the highest heaven, and yet he still dwells with us here. Hallowed be your name. It's a way of saying, God, you're perfect. You're perfect in all your ways. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. I want God's kingdom to be here and now. Your will be done. Every day I want God's will to be done on planet Earth. If God's will was done on planet Earth, there'd be no death, there'd be no crime, there'd be no war. Things will be perfect. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us then this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. So for, Lord, if we've sinned in any way on this day, forgive us, please, in the name of Jesus. As we forgive those who have sinned against us. That's important. And I've told, I told you this last month as well. You need to forgive your enemies people who have hurt you, even family members, children, you, you have to forgive them. Because the word of God says, if you do not forgive others their sins against you, God says, I will not forgive your sins. Ooh, whoa. That's how important forgiveness is to God. He says, you need to forgive. I've forgiven you. You need to forgive. In fact, if you don't forgive, maybe I'll remember some of your sins. So be, be cautious about that. That's a, that's a challenge there. Forgive your enemies. He's forgiven us all our sins. Who are we to hold sins against another? We need to forgive people who have hurt us, even people who have done terrible things, okay? I get that. I've had bad stuff done to me in my life, bad stuff. We even got to forgive them. That's not saying it was right, but that's, that's letting it go. It doesn't have to stay with us, and holding on to it is not hurting them. It's hurting us. We need to let it go and forgive not to say it's right. We're saying, God, we give it over to you. We give that person to you. You deal with them. Okay? Forgiveness. Talking with God. Reading the Bible. These are all practices of a Christian. Joining a church. Having a church fellowship, right? Gathering here right now. This is our little church service. And I know you have other churches that visit as well. Gather. Worship. Even, I dare say, even if it's a denomination that, you, you know, you don't, you don't necessarily associate with. I'm not, I'm not too, you know, I, I think as long as we all believe in Jesus and we believe the word of God, you know, we're, we're family. I'm not going to argue about Methodist or Baptist or 
evangelical or Protestant or Catholic or Lutheran or all this thing. As long as we believe in Jesus and we believe the Word of God, we're family. We should love each other. We should worship together. In fact, um, the churches are gathering on Good Friday to do a community service all together, which is really cool, if you ask me. But then read that Bible. Pray every day. Read the Word. Study the Word. Think about Jesus and what he's done for you. Cry out to Jesus Christ. I think, I think we should all do that. Cry out to Jesus Christ daily and say, Jesus, help me. Jesus, save me. Jesus, I love you. Ask him for forgiveness. Maybe you need to kind of get back into that spot of faith. Maybe you've kind of drifted off a little bit. Maybe you kind of need to recommit. And if you want to, we can do that right now if you want. Why don't we all just recommit our lives? But here I'll explain how this works, okay? The first step is to admit that we have sinned against God. You can't have the solution before you realize the problem, right? The problem is our sins, the things we've done wrong. And we've all sinned. I know I have. Mean to my sister. <laughs> I was disrespectful to my parents from time to time. I took the Lord's name in vain. Swore. Manipulated to get what I wanted. I was selfish when I should have been caring for others. I sinned. And I did some worse things too. I drank and got drunk. Smoking. Drugs even. So we have to admit, okay, I, I have these sins against me. They are on my record. That's going to be a problem on Judgment Day when I come before God. So I need forgiveness of those sins. Now, here's where a lot of people get mixed up and they think, okay, here's how I do it then. I'm going to do good stuff to make up for the bad stuff. Wrong. That's not going to work. There is no amount of good things you can do to make up for the bad stuff. It's good that you're trying to do good stuff, but it's not going to make up for the bad stuff. Instead, we need a Savior to forgive us our sins. Do you understand what Jesus did on the cross? What, what is that moment in history? What does that mean? Here, I'll tell you. It's scandalous, too, when you think about it. Jesus Christ dying on the cross, what does that have to do with me? I'll tell you what it has to do with you. Jesus Christ dying on the cross was to pay the payment for your sins. You get that? Yes. You know what that implies? We deserve to die for our sins. Whoa. Ouch. We deserve to die for our sins. But Jesus said, I will take that penalty for you. On the cross, Jesus died for our sins to pay the debt. Interesting. Get this. That means Jesus, who lived a perfect sinless life, the Son of God, God in human form, said, I'm going to take your sins onto myself on the cross and put them on and pay them off there for you. Maybe that's why he cried out, Father, why have you forsaken me? Because at that moment he was forsaken. He paid our sin debt. So that's what, we'll, that's what we need. To cry out to Jesus and say, Jesus, I believe you did die on that cross for my sins. For my sins. Not anyone else's, but yours personally. That's scandalous. That means when I was drunk and fallen all over stupid and arguing with my mom, Jesus took that on himself on the cross and paid for it. What? The Son of God did that for me? What? That's incredibly wonderful. God help me if I reject that, though. I choose to accept it, and I hope you will too today as well. Jesus paid your sins on the cross. He said, I'll take those filthy, nasty things you did and pay them off on the cross. Do you believe that today? That's for you. That's for you. So let's pray together. Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the living Savior, we confess that we have sinned. And we give our sins over to you, Lord Jesus. We believe 
that your perfect sacrifice on the cross has paid for our sins. We repent, we turn away from those sins, and we believe you have paid that sin debt for us, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We give it all to you. We give our lives and our hearts to you, Lord Jesus. Forgive us all of our sins. We repent of those sins. We turn away from them. We put our faith in you. Our sins are nailed to the cross with you, Jesus. Wow. You were willing to do that for us. Thank you, Jesus. Please grant us your Holy Spirit so we may live and be born again now. We receive it today. We receive it today. Lord Jesus Christ, we receive it today. In full, paid in full. Jesus said, it is finished, he said. For our sins, it is finished. In Jesus' name, say amen. Amen. Amen.